Welcome to an explanation of mass meetings in early years at Salisbury Primary School. Uh, so we're starting off with the first page and it says today is mass meeting number and then you can write the number in the star. So for example if this was the first mass meeting I would put a number one in there uh, and you just carry on changing the number every day and in class we say we're going to have a party when we get to number 100 you might want to set a target for home and maybe have an incentive or a reward for getting there and we have our days of the week page some classes start their day days of the week song on sunday some some start on monday um whatever your child is used to is absolutely fine um, in room and night we've started on Monday and our song goes a little bit like this days of the week seven days days of the week seven days days of the week days of the week days of the week seven days there's Monday and there's Tuesday there's Wednesday and there's Thursday there's Friday and there's Saturday and then there's Sunday days of the week seven days days of the week seven days days of the week days of the week days of the week seven days and then you might ask questions about the days of the week. So, for example, what is today? What was yesterday? What is the day going to be tomorrow? Um, and we try and answer in full sentences. So, for example, today is Wednesday and we might say uh, today is Wednesday. Or, yesterday was Tuesday. Tomorrow is Thursday. Uh, then we have our months of the year page. And again, we have a song and our song goes like this. January, February, March and April, May, June, July and August, September, October, November, December. These are the months of the year. And again, we would ask questions after that. So, for example, what is the month this month? What is going to be the month next? What is the first month of the year? What month is your birthday in? We then have a calendar, again, pointing out today's date um, and we would kind of put a circle around it and try and read it Wednesday, the 1st of April 2020. And again, that would move on every day, um, learning about our cardinal numbers, first, second, third and so on. Uh, what is the weather today? So this is our weather tally chart and in uh, different classes, they have different songs in room night. Uh, our song goes what is the weather today today what is the weather today it's cloudy and cold it's cloudy and cold that is the weather today and of course you would change what the weather is in the song depending on what the weather is outside so you'd have to check that first and then once you've worked out where uh, what the weather is like you um, put your tally in so it's cloudy today so I'm going to put one tally mark in the cloudy section and again you just build that up over the course of the day and it's a really great learning tool when something gets to five make sure you put uh, you kind of cross the gate and we can see that that is a, a nice way of counting um up to five and beyond five and especially when you get beyond five um say you get to seven instead of just counting seven tallies you can try and count on from five so five six seven Uh, then we come to our magic number. So um, every day you can pick a different number. The child can pick, you can pick, you can find a, a, a random number generator on the internet or you can uh, roll um, some dice, whatever you like. Uh, um, any number that you think that they know and they're confident with from zero all the way up to 20 if um, that's what you would uh, if they feel confident with that um, and then you write that number in the star so for example uh, today let's uh, say that eight is our magic number and then we might get um, do some action so maybe we'll clap eight times one two three four five six seven eight always remembering to stop at your magic number we might turn around eight times one two three four five six seven eight stop fantastic and then we're going to fill out all the rest of the boxes so with one more and one less we get again are going to try and use full sentences so 
one less than eight is seven. And we can try and write the, the numeral seven. One more than eight is nine. Again, we can try and write it. Um, we're then going to try and write the word form of eight, and they might need some help with this. A lot of the numbers are tricky, num uh, tricky words, but they might recognize some sounds in those words. They might want to have a go using the, the phonic skills that they do know, um, and I would definitely encourage that. Um, but feel free, if, you, if an adult wants to write the number and they want to copy it, that's absolutely great as well. We then do the tally, just like on our um, weather tally chart, and we might all count together. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Fantastic. And then with a number line, it's a blank number line, and we can do different things on different days. Sometimes we might, might want to start a number line at zero. Sometimes we might want to start at a one. Sometimes we might want to start at a different number and see if we can still use the number line to count on and count back. Today, I'm going to start at zero and end in 10, and I want to try and find eight. So where is eight going to be? And there are lots of different ways a child could do this. They could count on from zero or they could count back from 10. Either way, it's absolutely fine just trying to find eight on the number line. So with our shape of the day, we will um, I will normally pick a shape in my head and describe it and get children to try and guess or tell their partner what shape I'm describing. So, for example, I might say, OK, my shape has four sides and four corners. It has two longer sides and two shorter sides. What is my shape? And hopefully they will know that my shape is a rectangle. Um, uh, they can have a go at um, describing a shape and you can guess it. Um, can they spell the shape? Can they recognise the words on the screen? Um, there's lots of things you can do with this slide. And again, similar with our 3D shape of the day, um, so a lot of the time I will describe a shape, but they can try and describe the shape. It's really good to try and use for the 2D, 2D and 3D shapes mathematical language um, like uh, sides and corners for 2D shapes, maybe faces and edges for 3D shapes. So, for example, I might say, OK, my shape of the 3D shape of the day has two faces, one curved face and one flat face. What is my shape of the day? And hopefully they will say a cone and they would be correct. And um, yeah, brilliant. For our patterns, so again, you can use different shapes to create different patterns, um, but they should be kind of repeating. Can they continue this pattern? And a lot of the time in room and I class, we will use actions to go along with these. So, for example, for our uh, hexagon circle pattern, I might um, tap my legs for hexagon and clap my hands for circle. Uh, so let's have a go. Hexagon circle, hexagon circle. OK. Hexagon, circle, hexagon, circle. Let's see. Um, hexagon, circle, hexagon, circle. Brilliant. Um, this one is a slightly different pattern. Let's see if we can pick it up. I'm going to clap my hands for squares. I'm going to click my fingers for the pentagon. Square, square, hexagon. Oh, pentagon, pentagon. Square, square, pentagon, pentagon. Square, square, pentagon, pentagon. Um, can they create their own patterns with different shapes? Our number line, we can do lots of different things with our number line. We can use it to recognise the order of numbers, which numbers are greater or smaller than others. Where Can you see the number 12? Can you see the number 2? What is the smallest number you can see? What number is 1 greater than 10? What number is 1 less than 4? Lots of questions that we can ask for our number line. And finally, positional language. Um, so we have a rectangle and a teddy bear. Can we describe where the teddy bear is? Uh, so in this instance, I might say uh, the teddy bear is next to the rectangle. Um, for this, I might say the teddy bear is under the rectangle. And again, you can do this um, on the screen, but you could also find a teddy bear and find some things around the house and you could place 
the teddy bear and ask your child where is the teddy bear the child can um, place the teddy bear and explain to you using positional language where the teddy bear is so th that's all that we have in our mass meeting there's lots to get through don't feel pressurized to do everything every day and um, do what suits you and your child but it's a really great thing a really great resource to have as a routine on a daily basis um, if you've got any questions please feel free to comment and i will try and get back to you have a great day thank you